The Pacers have already won twice in this building during this playoff series. One more time and they can finally finish off the Celtics and move on to the second round. Even with Jermaine O'Neal missing from the lineup, the Pacers have back-to-back -back wins. They go for a third straight today in Cleveland against LeBron James and the Cavs. Now, if J.O. is out for the season, Mr. Commissioner, you have to give the Pacers Ron our test back, right? No, no comment from the NBA. They, of course, feel like these suspensions are just and should stand. Now that you're done gorging yourself on ham and cookies and you've opened up all the gifts that you just can't wait to return, here's a new Hoosier holiday tradition complete with Yule Tidings. This is the whole ball of wax. If that happens, they can make the playoffs if Miami loses or ties, or New England loses or ties, or Denver loses or ties. But there's still another way the Colts can get in the playoffs. A Baltimore loss or tie, a San Diego loss, a Denver loss, and a Miami win or tie. Just going to kick back and uh, suntan lotion, please. Somebody? Yeah. Maybe right. a drink you're with, a, with one just, of those umbrellas. Yeah, Tamika Catchings of the Indiana Fever and Team USA will play for the gold medal. It wasn't easy in the semifinals against Russia, but they get it done. Welcome back live to Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. I'm Eric Waxler. It's Louisville and Utah tonight. A lot of people asking, how good are the Utes? Well, Hi there, Rachel. This is a little strange. It's like the Boston Red Sox playing a home game at Yankee Stadium. Louisville at Rupp Arena for their first round NCAA tournament game against Stanford. Tonight, Ron Artest returned to the court after almost a year off tonight. Game number two here in Miami. And joining us now is NBA Commissioner David Stern. On a team of offensive superstars, Brandon Stokely wasted no time finding his place. Best time of my professional career. I was feeling great. It's caught by Stokely. Stokely, he's got it, 45, 50. Everything was going so good. Right open to Stokely, touchdown. Just had a newborn son. Stokely's got it. But while Brandon is busy making big plays for the Colts, he was wide open. his son Cameron isn't interested in following dad's footsteps quite yet. And I was like, Cameron, look. He's like, wanted to get down the floor. He wanted his cartoon on. He doesn't have a clue. You know, football, that was used to be up there at the top of the priority list. You know, now it takes a back seat to my family. The addition to his family came on December 15, 2003. It was a joy. As Cameron entered the world, it was also time for Brandon to enter the Colts lineup. And what an entrance he made. The coming out party last year's playoff run. 25, 20. A career day against Denver. Touchdown! Then in Kansas City, another big game. Brandon Stokely. Brandon Stokely. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Everything should have been picture perfect, but with the AFC Championship game just days away, the Stokelys ended up here at St. Vincent Children's Hospital, and their new son, Cameron, was fighting for his life. We rushed him down to the emergency room, and you know, within about 30 minutes, they, they told us he had meningitis. Bacterial meningitis, an infection of the fluid in the spinal cord and surrounding the brain. When they told us the news, I just pretty much blacked out. It could have gone any, either way in the first couple days. He said it's very serious, and they, uh, you know, took us out of the room right away, and, you know, they started running IVs on him. I think because his mother picked up on the fact that he had a fever quite quickly and brought him to the, uh, to the emergency department, that made all the difference. With Cameron's condition stabilized, the decision was made. Brandon would rejoin the Colts and play against the Patriots. It was tough to focus. Um, it was tough to, to put that in the back of your mind. The Patriots gave the Colts a beating that day, and when it was over, the emotion poured out. You can only imagine, until you've had a kid you think has a cold, you bring him into the hospital. And they tell you that he, he might die. That's about as tough as you can get. With Cameron crawling toward his first birthday, mom and dad admit they are overprotected. They learned firsthand the danger of meningitis. Symptoms are just flu-like symptoms, and people put their child to bed and they don't wake up. Now we, we look at Cameron and he's wonderful. I mean, he's the happiest baby, always smiling, always laughing. Um, he's just 
the joy of my life, and uh, I can never thank God enough for him. Football experts consider Brandon tough because he can take a hit over the middle. But Brandon believes the real tough guy is the one who doesn't even like football. <laughs> At least not yet. <laughs> Eric Waxler, Channel 13 Eyewitness Sports. Good evening. Louisville leaves for Charlotte tomorrow morning. They're going to have an open practice and press conference as they get set for Thursday's game with Tennessee. Rick Pitino says he's not worried about his team's free throw shooting. The cards haven't exactly been super reliable at the line lately. And then there's Terrence Farley's air ball late in the Oklahoma win that had the bench cracking up. Terrence Farley is just, um, just, uh, he's, I never thought I'd see anybody worse than Ellis Miles. He's worse <laughs> as a free throw shooter. Uh, so we tried some different things yesterday. Now I have him trying to hit, you know, the top of the square on the backboard, I'm trying to get him to hit the top of the square. And the ball's just e inching over the rim. Hey, even Shaq can't shoot free throws. Tennessee's Chris Lofton doesn't miss many free throws or three-pointers for that matter. He's the SEC's all-time three-point leader. He is from Maysville, Kentucky, but ended up a star in big orange country. Louisville and Kentucky have both taken hits for not recruiting Chris Lofton. Coming out of high school, the guys that they got instead of Chris were better than Chris. That's not a knock on Chris, and it should not be a knock on Tubby or Coach Patino. Now, why should they be criticized? Because Chris Lofton made himself into an All-American. The hoopla surrounding Western Kentucky's tournament run is dying down a bit as far as the players are concerned. They've got to think about UCLA right now. The fans, though, they're having a ball. We headed to Bowling Green today where the Topper Nation is getting set to go west for the Sweet 16. Western Kentucky last went to the Sweet 16 in 1993, so you can't blame their fans for enjoying the moment. It's exciting. We're in the Sweet 16. It's been a while. <laughs> Outside of Bowling Green and the Bluegrass State, WKU doesn't have the name recognition of some of college basketball's big boys. Some of the older people in the community uh, in Chicago, they know about Western Kentucky and the history and the tradition it carries. But like most of the younger people still ask me, is it a Division II? So they don't know too much about it. They will now. The tournament road hasn't exactly been pain free. Head coach Darren Horn ran right into an overhang before a network TV interview. His attention apparently diverted by a text message. So how's the nose now? Uh, I don't know, you tell me. I'm, <laughs> I don't look at it. The toppers are double-digit underdogs against mighty UCLA, but the players say they don't feel like it. Well, I think Cinderella's name, Cinderella, is like a great phrase used by the outsiders looking in, but uh, we really haven't spoke about being a Cinderella team. Like you said, we feel like we belong, and we're just going to prove. And the Lady Cards try and join this Sweet 16 party tonight. Louisville has never advanced this far in the NCAA tournament tonight. They'll have to beat Kansas State. They're playing in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Angel McCautry is the star of this U of L basketball team. But first year coach Jeff Wall says, hey, everyone deserves credit for making things happen. Brandy Reddy, Sean Teese, and you've got Candace Bingham has been playing well. And, and Patrika Barlow has done an outstanding job all season to, to lead our team. So, you know, fr from day one, you know, I I've really been impressed wi with the way they've embraced things. And again, his first year at Louisville, yes, he inherited some talent, but to make it all work with yeah. a new coach, yeah. it's not it's always easy. It's worked for him so mm -hmm. far. It may be just the beginning for him. He's they